Let's talk about Star Wars. <laughs> Some people are obsessed with Star Wars because of the concept of space travel. Others are in love with the heart-wrenching plot. When I am watching Star Wars, I am very impressed by the mega high-tech cities and how they transport species using smart airways or self-flying vehicles. When I'm driving on the streets of Boston, however, the only thing me and Luke Skywalker have in common is that we are both desperate to avoid dangerous obstacles. <laughs> in his case, missiles. In mine, road bombs and potholes. Currently, high-tech companies are promising self-driving vehicles and high-speed underground freeways. But without a functioning infrastructure, this transportation of the future can never be enabled. We spent over $1.5 trillion on road improvements over the last decade. Yet we see damaged roads everywhere. Why is that? And what can we do about it? So one way to get cities to fix our roads is to call attention to potholes. And some people have taken this into their own hands by either having creative photo shoots next to the potholes in their city, <laughs> or by turning them into beautiful art pieces, or by expressing the tragedy of driving into a pothole using the Photoshop skills. <laughs> Poor roads are usually not this fun to deal with. The financial damages they cause to the economy are massive, estimated to be $160 billion a year in wasted fuel. Even worse, they are directly responsible for 12,000 deaths each year. And I want to be clear that I'm not just talking about potholes here. They are symptoms of much larger problems. Not attending to our crumbling infrastructure can cause catastrophic events, like the collapse of Mississippi River Bridge in 2007. Or the Oroville Dam spillway only two years ago. It's obviously an important issue. So naturally, cities are taking every measure possible, and they are using the most advanced technologies to first identify which road needs to be fixed, and secondly, which road to fix, because there is not enough money to repair all of them at the same time. I actually brought a picture of the super high-tech advanced methodology that a lot of cities rely on today. And I know that if you are not an expert engineer, it might not be that clear what we are looking at, but just, just take a look. This method is called angry residence. <laughs> <laughs> so the way this works is whoever calls more and complains louder will have a higher chance of getting the road fixed. My grandma was one of these resources. And at the risk of throwing my own grandma under the bus, I'm going to say this is probably not the best solution. To be fair, a lot of cities do use a more comprehensive approach. They send an engineering crew to every road, they close it down for inspection, they measure each crack, each pothole, each bump, and then they write down what they think the condition of the road is. Now, when this method is applied, what we experience as drivers is very similar to this. <laughs> this is time consuming, is subjective, and causes congestion. So what do we do? How can we evaluate our roads effectively without disrupting traffic. When I was doing my graduate studies at Northeastern University six years ago, me and a team of fellow engineers were asking ourselves the same questions. Internet of Things, or IoT, was a fairly new concept back then. It is the methodology of embedding sensors in everyday objects to send and receive data. A lot of you are already using it. And I can tell you we can do a lot more with this amazing technology than talking to Siri about the weather or asking our fridges to give us ice cream. So using the concept of Internet of Things, we asked ourselves, what if we embed sensors in objects that we have plenty of on the streets? Cars. We wanted to enable these cars to collect data for us as they are driving around daily traffic, going about their usual business. The concept is simple. Sensors detect the problem, they send data to the city, and the city fixes the problem before it gets too costly. Roads are generally rated from 0 to 100. 0 worse, 100 best. To repair a road that is rated below 60, 
we need at least six times our money than repairing the road above a 60 score. So there are massive cost savings in catching problems early. So with that goal in mind, we started experimenting with some sensors. We first tried, we first tried microphones and we mounted them near tires. We thought if we can hear the difference between driving on a rough road and a smooth road, the signals should also be picked up by microphones. Turned out there was too much noise to filter through. So we then tried radars and we mounted them underneath the vehicle to gauge the distance with the road surface and map out potholes and bumps. We found out that we needed more information to evaluate the roads properly. So we started using 3D cameras and by creating a 3D profile of the surface, we could flag any deviation from a flat surface as problems that cities need to fix. Our next challenge was what to do with this data. Terabytes and terabytes of data, data would be pouring in each time these vehicles drive out. So it was important to create an application that could translate them into meaningful parameters and give cities simple tools to optimize their budget. I'd like to share with you the application we created for city of Poland in Maine. So the first thing we are going to see is an overall condition map. It's simple, green means good, yellow fair, orange poor, and red very poor. Most of us think the road in front of our house is the worst in the entire city. Looking at the simple color-coded map of our city's road condition can sometimes be eye-opening. Now, you can click on any location and look at an image taken by our sensors while driving over that location. As a mayor, if I have $5 million to plan a repair project, I can ask the software which roads I need to repair and why. It gives us the answer, taking into account each road's traffic, condition, and proximity to schools and hospitals. Results highlighted here in purple. Planning a road repair is a complicated process, and it usually takes cities months and a lot of manpower. We just did it over the last 30 seconds. Let's think more about the underlying civil infrastructure for the future. Smart mobility is not possible without a functioning infrastructure. We can no longer build our way out of our transportation challenges. We can't keep adding new lanes to fix congestion, and we can't rebuild our entire road network to fix our infrastructures. We don't have unlimited resources and must get smarter in how we go about spending them. Remarkable investments are being made today in the world of mobility to make our transportation driverless and congestion-free. By transporting people seamlessly through autonomous cars, our daily commutes can become an entertaining or productive part of our days. Something we look forward to. A place of work or a place to play. To enable this exciting future of mobility and make our transportation part of this revolution, we can take advantage of Internet of Things. And we can use it beyond our roads. Remember the collapsing bridges and dams earlier? What if we embed sensors in bridges to constantly monitor their conditions? What if we outfit drones with radars to allow them to inspect dams as they fly over them? To evaluate our sidewalks, what if we install sensors on baby strollers and have them locate all the tripping hazards and feed the data into a very similar application that I shared earlier? By the way, we are working on these. <laughs> A central application can hold all this information, allowing the city to view the problems with their infrastructure as soon as they appear, empowering them to fix more with their limited budget, and paving the way for a future that is exciting for all of us. So that one day, maybe one day, the only obstacles we need to worry about in our daily commutes are stormtroopers and spaceships. Thank you, and may the force be with you. <laughs>